So it was just a little tattoo across the back of her neck. Had she grown out her hair just a little bit longer, it would never have been noticed. But there it was. And I noticed it in a freedom fort of sort of script. It said, defend hope. Now, thankfully, this was pre-COVID-19 times, and I was clearly not socially distant. So these bespectacled and aging eyes of mine could still read it. Defend hope. Now, I really do not try to be creepy, but this was a captive sort of doublet. We were standing online or in line on the same day at the same time at the same Water Street coffee joint in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and her two inked words intrigued me. So I said, excuse me, would you tell me about your neck ink? <laughs> okay, so anyway I tell it, anyway I say it, it still sounds creepy, right? But I was apparently not the first to ask because she had her response ready for me. It's sort of from the Bible, she says. Be ready to, to defend the hope that's within you. Ah, I got it. It's sort of a free paraphrase from 1 Peter 3 something or other. Okay, thanks, say I. Yeah, she says, but that's not all, if you want to know. <laughs> yes, I want to know. She was next up to order, and then I, and then the wait for drinks that goes on in such a place. Then she turns with her cup in hand and says, so, picking right up where she left off, and I was relieved that it was not forgotten. I got this three years ago, she says, pointing to her neck. My brother was on opioids and got a bad dose on the street. He OD'd. But the med techs came and gave him the out. He lived, sort of, heart arrhythmia, brain damage. I was in the hospital chapel at Bronson thinking, crying, praying, whatever. And this person with a collar, a chaplain, comes in and asks how I'm doing. I shrugged and said, I'm staying hopeful. And then there was a space until this chaplain person says, I've looked at the charts and I've talked to the doctors. I don't see a lot of reason for hope. But I did, she said. He was my brother, and that was reason enough for my hope. I had had lots of conversations. I had had some fights with God, and that was reason enough for my hope. The chaplain woman left, googled reasons for hope, and this Bible verse came up. And that's why it's on my neck. Hope is worth defending, she says, or it's not really hope. Hope is worth defending or it's not really hope. This video that we, we just saw, I, I just found so compelling and fascinating and profound and so many levels to it. That young lady's pain and, and how she dramatically or energetically or forcefully engaged with God. And you know what, I think in, in many ways it's a, a story somewhat familiar to all of us. Um, I'm sure we've all had a loved one that's been in a desperate way, one way or another, and, and, and we frantically reach out for help anywhere where we can find it, just trying to, trying to get a solution to our pain and trying to ease that pain. And so let's just pause for just a minute and, and consider th these discussion questions. Do you want to reach out and, and hug this young lady? Maybe cry with her? Have you, have you or a loved one ever been in a similar situation? Let's just take just, just a few moments and, and talk about these questions.
Well, today we're asking the question, do you dare to defend hope? And it's part of our series about asking questions about God or trying to, trying to learn a little bit more about God. Who is God and what is he like? And, and, and for today, what does God have to do with defending hope? Hello, I'm Pastor Jerry at Calmo Church, and let's dig into this fascinating question. But first, before we go too far, let's talk about this word hope. You know, Google tells us that hope is defined as an expectation or a desire for a, a positive outcome. But you know, when I, when I was reflecting on this and studying this, I think, I think hope is a, is a much stronger word than just desire. You know, desire kind of implies that you're kind of sitting back and boy, you'd sure like it if something happened. Um, but hope is a stronger word. Stro hope has some power. Hope has some, has some, uh, let's say, has some, uh, say in football, hope has some skin in the game, right? And that's, Abby agrees. Abby says that yes, hope has some more power to it. For, so perhaps a better definition is hope is the expectation that something good will happen and that we're anticipating, we're looking forward to that outcome. And so it goes beyond just desiring something. Another word that we sometimes intermix in there is the word faith. Well, hope is not the same as having faith. Faith is trust or confidence that someone will either do something or act in a certain way. So if we kind of put this together, as Christians, faith is the trust or confidence that God will keep his promises, right? And then hope is the expectation that God will be present in our hearts and that God gives us something to look forward to, that God will comfort and sustain us in troubled times, that God does have a place for us in heaven. It's, and so there's a subtle difference between having faith in God and the joy of anticipating those wonderful blessings that God pours out over us. And, but then, today, our focus is not so much on hope itself, but rather on defending hope. So what does it mean when we talk about defending hope? Defending hope involves helping other people have that confidence that there's reason for hope, right? It's kind of like being a witness for hope, if you want to think of it that way. So that when people feel there is no hope, that all is lost, when we defend hope, we are helping people see that there is hope. We're, we're basically champion, championing <laughs> hope for other people. That we all do have a reason for hope. So consider our world today. It just seems like there's a record number of issues facing us, right? Thankfully, the pandemic seems to be fading away, at least in this country. But we still have child care issues money or financial, the cost of groceries. Uh, Sandy, just about every time she goes to the grocery store, she says, man, those prices are high. We tend to worry about the future, what's coming on, our job security, relationships, health, and then foreign affairs. If, that, if we don't already have enough things, we, we got foreign affairs to be concerned about. Now, these are everyday topics that people, all of us, are struggling with or are worried about. People need hope. People need an expectation that there will be a favorable outcome. People are looking for confidence that something good will happen. But where or how do people get hope? Well, we can defend hope with that power and peace that we get from God the Father, Jesus our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Advocate of the Holy Spirit. So let's pause for just a moment and consider these discussion questions. Have you ever felt at any time in your life that there was no hope in, in maybe one particular area? but Or have you known someone who felt like there was just no hope? hope. And then the next question is, where did you look to find hope? Or how did you guide someone to find hope? Let's take just a few moments and consider those questions.
So we have this mashup of 1 Peter 3 something and Romans 8. Let's go with that. It's not the first time we church professionals have had to deal on the fly with some version of scripture tossed our way without context or accuracy. So people, let's go with that. First, let's talk Peter, who will harm you if you are zealous for good. But happy are you even if you suffer because of righteousness. Don't be terrified or upset by them. Instead, instead regard Christ the Lord as holy in your hearts. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. And then Paul in Romans, now if we hope for what we don't see, we wait for it with patience. With patience. In the video that we just saw, he talks about a scripture from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 to 15. And he said, here's some, just some key spots. Who will harm you if you're zealous for good? Be happy even if you suffer because of righteousness. Regard Christ the Lord as holy in your hearts. And then whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. And that's kind of like what that young lady was, was kind of referring to is, if you're struggling, if you're kind of, you know, things aren't going well, be ready to defend hope. Well, this passage from 1 Peter, I think, has a great deal of meaning, and it has a great deal of meaning on several levels. One is to be zealous for good. Another is to be happy, even if we're suffering. Regard Christ the Lord as holy, as God. And then it's kind of subtle, but in there it says we need to demonstrate our hope so that when someone asks us that we're ready to defend it. The young lady in our first video was demonstrating her hope because that the chaplain person came in and, and said, well, I, I don't see much room for hope here. I've seen the charts. But she says, but I do. I do see hope. That's my brother and I love him. And, and, and she goes on with a great deal of passion. And then she defended it again with passion. She said, I argued with God. I talked with God. I even fought with God. All in defending hope that she had that her brother would recover. Now think about yourself. What are the ways that, that we can defend hope in our lives? And so let's pause for a moment and consider this question. What are the ways that we can, in our own way, defend hope? Yet, we need to gather. We need to conference because in this fractured but not broken, in this bruised, beaten, but not defeated body, we know a common language, an experience, and a common experience that gives us every reason together to defend hope. God is in no way done with us yet, people. Not yet. We, we may think the heavy lifting of doing church is just on us, and when we fail, the church fails. But siblings in Christ, the ancients have reminded us again to defend hope, knowing that the church is of Christ and will be preserved to the end of time. Thanks be to God. Defend that hope, siblings, for that is not simply hope of the church. It is, at the end of the day, the hope of the world. Thanks be to God. And amen. I like the way this last video sum, kind of sums up what, what this whole passage means for us, and that is God is not done with us. We might think that we're in control and, you know, it's not going well, but God is not done with us. 
Does that resonate with you like it does with me? I mean, that really hits me in the heart that, that God is not done with us. God is not done with this world. And that gives me hope. And Jesus is not done with his church. Now, he's not talking about any one particular church. He's talking about the church universal, those Christians throughout the world. Jesus is doing the heavy lifting. He is not going to let his church go down. And I find that such an incredible thought because I forget about that. I forget about the fact that Jesus wants his church to succeed far more than we do. And he is doing the heavy lifting. It just seems to us sometimes that we're doing the heavy lifting. But you know, the part about that, that closing uh, part of that video that, that really struck me is that emphasis that we are to defend the hope that Jesus is active in his church and in the world. And that's what we have hope in. We have hope that Jesus is in control, that Jesus has our best interests in mind, and that Jesus has a place for us in his world. Jesus is not done with us. And so we have the expectation of a good outcome one that we can look forward to with anticipation and joy, and one that we can defend with those around us because the world does need us to defend hope. That's why Jesus came to the earth and formed his church. Now in 1 Corinthians 9, the apostle Paul says this, in a race all runners compete, run in such a way that you might win it. Athletes exercise self-control, and then Paul closes that passage up with, I don't run aimlessly, nor do I boxes beating in the air, air boxing, but I punish my body and enslave it so that I myself might not be disqualified. Paul is building up his strength to be able to defend hope. And you know, a couple of weeks I, I suggested that we need to struggle with God with our doubts and in our questions, not to fight with God or argue with God, but to build up our strength so that we all can demonstrate hope and then we can dare to defend hope. And so my closing question today is, do you dare to defend hope? Are you willing to train like an athlete and build your strength? Not muscles of flesh and bone, but muscles of spirit and hope. Let's pause for a moment and consider these discussion questions. Do you think the world is looking for someone to defend hope or that the world needs someone to defend hope? And then how can we defend hope for those around us and for the world? Let's just take a couple moments and consider those questions. I've shared some thoughts about defending hope. What do you think? Are you searching? Are you struggling? Would you be willing to build up your spiritual strength to better defend hope for others? I'd like to hear your thoughts. If this is during the premiere time, you can put a note in the chat box. Otherwise, you can call or text me at 517-588-8415. My email address is at the bottom of the screen or the Calmo connection card at calmochurch.org forward slash connect dash with dash Calamo. Maybe you'd like to talk about hope or defending hope. Well, let's talk. I'd love to explore this topic with you. Or maybe you know someone or have a friend that's struggling. Share this message with them. Suggest that they reach out because I'd love to talk with them as well. And we can explore together how God loves us so much and is just waiting to help us live into a lifestyle filled with meaning and contentment. How he gives us a sense of peace in a troubled and a hope of a broken world and then helps us to have that hope to be able to make a difference around us. And now for our Pentecost challenge. 
Spend five minutes, just five minutes or at least five minutes in prayer each day and just pray for God to fill your heart with peace and hope. And then take a moment, take, just take a moment and let that peace and hope fill your heart. Let that, just like a, a, a breath of fresh air or a glass of cold water. And then pray for the strength to defend that hope with those around you so that they might be strengthened and have hope in this broken and troubled world. Talk to God and challenge Him to fill you with hope and the strength to defend hope with others. Post a reminder, folks. Post a reminder. If you're like me, you're going to forget. Post a reminder someplace so you remember, oh, I got to stop and I got to pray to God and think about getting that hope and the strength to defend hope with those around me. And I pray that the awesome love and care of God the Father, Jesus our Lord and Savior, and the power of the Holy Spirit help you to grow in love and trust of Jesus Christ and then help you grow in hope to be able to defend hope in a lost and troubled world, hope that leads to peace and joy. And next Sunday, we're going to wrap up our series about curious about God and put it all, pull it all together with the question, how does life with God help me in the world? God is great. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for, for all your love and care and concern that you pour out over us and all those blessings. And Lord, we pray that, that, that you might transform my words to those hearing this message, that they might hear your message, that they might hear your words that you have custom crafted just for them. We pray that you reveal the awesome power and presence of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Advocate, so that we might have hope and be able to defend hope with those around us. We pray all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Friends, feel the awesome power and presence of the Holy Spirit this day as we are forgiven and adopted as God's holy children. God gives us that everlasting boost that we sometimes need to get back on track, to grow in curiosity and wisdom and hope. Open your heart and feel the warmth and blessings of his love. Amen and amen. Have a great day. Have a great week. Bye for now.